I'm Alan Tennyson, the curator of vertebrates at Te Papa. In November 2013, a group of four scientists, including me, went down to the subantarctic Snares Islands for about a fortnight to study the animals and plants down there. One of the species we were particularly interested in was the broadbill prion, which is a small seabird. We travelled by boat to the Snares Islands, which are about 100 kilometres south of Stewart Island. The Snares Islands are the southernmost breeding site of the broad billed prion. Uh, in winter of 2011, there was a massive die off of primes uh, along the west coast of the North Island of New Zealand. Primes are small little petrels, they're bluey grey above, white below. They're, they're very common birds in the southern oceans. But the number of birds that died on the west coast uh, in 2011 was unprecedented. We estimate that there were about a quarter of a million birds died in that single event, and 90% of those were the broadbill prime, which is the largest of those species. We don't know very much about broadbill primes, even though they're very common birds. They nest around southern New Zealand and out on Chatham Island, and there are millions of them. But the numbers on each individual colony are really very, very poorly documented. But one of the sites that we do know a little bit about them is the Snares Island. Um, and this very cave here used to have about a dozen bears nesting in it back in the 1980s. So I'm going to go in and uh, have a look and see if uh, I can see any today. Um, they should be large chicks at the moment, so they should be fairly obvious. There'll be big downy things uh, and down laying around their nests but uh, they're quite hard to get to, so I'm going to have to scramble into this horrible hole behind me. Okay, so um, I could see one broadbill prion chicken there. It's a big fluffy thing, um, and it was calling as well, but I couldn't see any others, so it looks like uh, the numbers are way down on what they used to be. Our skewers breed all around the snares. This is a subantarctic skewer, and uh, most of them are in territorial pairs or groups around the island. They are on nests uh, with eggs. Uh, with, uh, some of them have got quite large chicks, but this particular point here, which is called Skewer Point, is where all the non-breeding birds hang out. What we're going to do is uh, go around and collect their food uh, remains, which they've left on the ground, and see what they've been eating. Um, one of the reasons we're doing that is because we're investigating whether broadbill prions have declined and uh, there's a previous count that I did back in the 1980s here and we're going to look at the numbers of broadbill prions that have been eaten by skewers uh, now compared to the 1980s and see if there's any difference in numbers. So petrels are quite difficult things to survey in terms of numbers and distribution because they come ashore at night and they nest in holes in the ground or in rocky crevices. So one way that we can try and work out uh, distributions and numbers is to look at the prey remains left by the predatory skewers. Uh, often they leave birds like this which are largely intact, they've eaten out all the guts and everything but um, they're quite easy to identify. This is a, a broadbill prion, a small petrel. Um, but a lot of the remains are just regurgitated heads, skulls, things like this. Um, so I'm just going through trying to work out which one is which. Here, for example, is a, a skull of a broadbill prime. There's also mottled petrel, sooty shearwater. Most common one in this midden is diving petrel. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's just another way of surveying petrels. The skewer remains and the nest counts showed 
that there had been a major population decline of broadbill primes on the snares since the 1980s. These results suggest that the Snares Island broadbill primes were affected by the massive 2011 storm wreck die-off. However, we did find some primes still nesting in the rocky crevices and caves of the snares, so we hope that the population will still be able to recover.